Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, um, where the eagle-eyed amongst you will recognise that I'm on my laptop today. I apologise if the sound isn't as good as usual, um, but I, I've realised that I've been having a short holiday um, this week, um, so some of the videos you've been seeing have been pre-recorded, which is very unusual. I almost always record that day's video on the day that it appears. Um, but with Christmas coming soon, and obviously with Mark and I desperately trying to continue this um, this record we have, I suppose, of producing two videos at least every day since the start of the first COVID pandemic, um, I've realised that I do actually need to record a video or two while I'm in Tenerife, which is, is, is a very beautiful island. Um, and uh, yeah. Hence, this is my hotel room, and I hope I, I hope you'll forgive me. Um, the puzzle we're going to be trying today is called The Slowest Snake, and it's by Dorlier, the maths professor. And, um, I mean, people like Marty Sears, who is a good judge of a puzzle, as well as being a brilliant setter, um, are saying that this might be their favourite ever Dorlier puzzle. So it's, it's only got three stars, I think, out of five for difficulty. So it might be approachable. I've read the rules and they are highly, highly unusual. But this is a puzzle I'm going to attempt for you today um, in a moment or two's time. Now, do I have any news? Let me think. Um, we are working on, on the Kickstarter delivery. The current schedule uh, for the release date of that is going to be the 24th of December. So it's going to arrive just in time for Santa um, uh, on, on Christmas Eve. Um, so look out for that. Oh, by the time this video goes live, um, our monthly reward for December, the Skunk Works 100 Snack Doku Pack, will have, um, will have finished. And therefore, I guess my video... I recorded myself solving all of those puzzles, all 100 of them. Um, that, that might be live on Patreon, so check that out. Um, I had an absolute blast solving those puzzles. Many, many thanks to the Scum Works for doing such an incredible job um, and producing uh, such a wonderful pack. Um, other than that, I've got loads of birthdays to catch up on. I apologise for this. Obviously, with pre-recording um, videos, I, I, I missed out on some people's birthdays. I always feel guilty when that happens. So I'm going to try and correct at least some of that now. So let's start with Amanda. It was your birthday on the 18th of December. And I know this because your husband, Andrew, wrote to us and said you'd appreciate a shout out. So Amanda, I'm sorry I'm late with the birthday wishes. I hope you had a great day with lots of cake. Um, next, I think it's Jacob. It could be Jacob, but I think it's Jacob. Um, your friend, Abby, wrote to us. And the two of you are about to fin finish um, grad school, I think. Um, you're in your final term. And, um, well, I, Jacob, I'm not even, my notes don't even tell me whether it's your birthday today or it was your birthday. But anyway, whatever the situation is, I hope you had a good one or are having a good one. Um, next to Daphne over there in the US, this is for the 17th of December. Um, Daphne, I, I wish you a happy birthday, obviously, but... Um, I don't think happy is the right adjective. Daphne, unfortunately, her cousin was, was killed in a car accident the week before her birthday. Daphne, I'm so sorry to hear that. That is awful news. Um, and, yeah, I mean, you wrote about watching Cracking the Cryptic videos to distract yourself. And, well, if, if we have provided any solace, um, at least take a crumb of comfort from that. I, I'm... So sorry for that loss of yours and, and obviously what your family must be going through. But I wish you, I, I wish you, I hope you had as good a birthday as was possible. Um, on, a, on a happier note, on a happier note, let's turn to Yana. Um, and this is, this is for the 22nd, which, oh, that's, no, that is, that is the day this video will be going live. So Yana, your husband Kyle wrote to us and said that you would appreciate a shout out. So Yana, many, many happy returns. Um, Marco, over there in Italy, your your girlfriend, Giulia, um, Marco's a physicist, I think. Um, your girlfriend, Giulia, Giulia, and I hope I'm saying that right, because I always want to say Giulia, as in the Italian spelling, as Giulia, but I think it is pronounced Giulia. I hope that's, that's correct. Um, 
got wedding singer vibes. Why am I thinking about the wedding singer? Don't know. Brain, turn yourself off. Naughty, naughty brain. Um, but anyway, you, you two discovered that you both watch the channel independently, even though you've been going out for eight years. So it's your eight year anniversary, I think I'm shouting out today. Uh, and for that, I'm sure there must be cake in store. Um, Ona, Ona, you've turned 23. And I know this because your girlfriend, Karina, wrote to us. Uh, I think your birthday was on the 17th of December. And I gather that although you're from Ireland, um, you might be on a short soiree to, to England at the moment. So, Ona, many happy returns. And finally, Sophia. Sophia has turned seven. And I know this because your dad, Ricardo, uh, wrote to us, Sophia, and said, um, and said that often when you hear the music, the crack in the cryptic, you say, why are you watching that man again? <laughs> a good question. And absolutely <laughs> gets to the heart of the matter. Uh, and in fact, reminds me of, um, oh, there was that, uh, there's a comedian. I used to go to the comedy store sometimes in, in London. I got into the real habit of going on a sort of Friday night. And there was, there was a guy who would deliver one-liners with um, a completely straight face. And I thought he was hilarious. Um, and yeah, once, once I was in stitches from the first line, he sort of he shuffled up to the microphone. He sort of looked out at the audience, completely straight faced, and he said, people are always saying to me, hey, you, what are you doing in my garden? I thought that was very funny. I still find that very funny. Anyway, Sophia, you, you shouting out about why you're watching that man again made me think of that. And apparently you've suggested that you're, you're trying to get into Sudoku yourself. And you think that I should solve some of the kids' Sudokus that we've published on Patreon. Um, so you get the full cracking the cryptic experience. That is a very sensible idea. I will try and do that when I get a spare moment or two, which which. I wish I was getting more spare moments to do. And sorry, yeah, the, the air con in the room has just turned off. That's probably better. The fan on the laptop has just turned on. That's probably worse. But anyway, let's have a look at The Slowest Snake by Dorlea. I will read the rules. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, draw a snake which starts at a grey circle um, and ends at the other grey circle. Oh, funny, funny thingy thingy language today. Funny, funny, funny things being highlighted. Um, so it starts and ends on these um, and never passes through a grey square. Right, so the snake doesn't go into those three cells. The snake moves orthogonally and or diagonally. And this is a horrible rule. I don't think I've ever seen this in a snake before. And can cross itself and acts as a slow thermometer, i.e. reading from one end to the other Digits on the snake increase or stay the same. The direction must be determined by the solver. I see. So that's why it's not telling us which of these is the start of the slow thermometer, in effect. We have to work that out. Um, furthermore, the snake passes through at least 27 cells. The sum of the digits within a cage must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of that cage. So we've got, we've got three six cages. And let's just think about this snake for a moment. So the snake, oh, it can go diagonally today. So we could be doing, whoops, I'm on a different mouse. I'm all over the place here. So we're going to sort of build a snake. And however we do it, it's got to be 27 long, at least 27 cells long. We can go diagonally. We can, oh, we can cross ourselves as well. That's, that's a horrific rule, isn't it? So we can, oh, okay, let's go to line drawing. Um, what colour line should we draw? Let's draw a blue line. So we could cross ourselves. So that's going to look something like this. Something like that. That might be possible. I mean, it looks absolutely ridiculous. And what that's telling us is that... But as we go along the thermometer, if this was the low end of the thermometer, we'd have to go... If the first cell was a 1, the second cell here would be, it couldn't be a 1, so it would have to be a 2. The third cell could be a 3. Um, oh, but we're crossing, the thermometer's crossing itself. How is that working then? Because it can't go in the same cell. That won't make any sense, will it? 
oh, I don't know what I've drawn here. I think, I think I've just drawn nonsense. But also, digits can repeat on, oh, I see. So that could be a three, for example, because then the thermometer could go three to three. Whereas normally with a Sudoku thermometer, every cell along the thermometer that extends away from the bulb end has to increase. In a slow thermometer, they can stay the same. So, I, okay, I've totally confused myself about what this is going to do. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. It is tempting. I will do it to highlight the um, highlight the six cages as having to either be one fives or two fours. So let's let's do these cells in green. So these are the starts and ends of my thermos. Um, now, the only thought I was having as I tried to draw my example snake in was that 27 is a ludicrous length for this thermometer. I mean, if you think, yeah, OK, it is a ludicrous length. I now start to see how you can start the puzzle, because the reason it's a ludicrous length is that What's the maximum length of a normal Sudoku thermometer? Well, it's nine cells. So to achieve 27 cells along a thermometer, we're going to have to repeat a lot of digits, aren't we? Because if we don't never repeat a digit, the, the digit could, the thermometer we draw, even though it crosses itself, etc., could only be nine cells long. So, in fact, yeah, okay. So I think there's a there's a, a trick. Dorlier is being tricky here by saying that the snake passes through at least 27 cells. I don't think there's any way it can pass through more than 27 cells. I'm now going to prove myself wrong. But it occurs to me that how many how many Sudoku digits in a row could be the same digit along this snake that we're going to draw. And I don't think the answer can possibly be higher than three. Because what I'm thinking is, let's start from this position. Let's imagine that this was the start of the, the snake. So that's a one. Now, if I have to keep this right down to the value of one for as long as I possibly can, I could make that a one. I could make that a one. Where can I put the fourth one? Nowhere. There is no way. So that, if that's right, I'm not saying it definitely is right, but that feels right to me. I think I've seen puzzles with that sort of slow thermometer type thing in them before. But if that's right, then I can only have three of any one digit. So obviously if these were nines instead, I can't, I mean, I can't put another nine anywhere, anywhere around this without it breaking the rules of Sudoku. So that implies, if that's right, that each digit on this thermometer must appear three times exactly. Now, what does that mean? That's really interesting, actually, because if we think about it, how do you how do you draw? How do you how how can you ever position a line? So, so there are going to be line segments of snake that that have to. I'm going to say they have to occupy. These squares, this might be my holiday brain getting the better of me, but that's what I feel like they, I feel like each line segment of three has to snip one of these cells, by which I mean, for example, let's go to lines again, I'm getting confused, but you could, you could draw that. Those could all be the same digit, couldn't they? That was fine. You could draw that. You could draw that. Uh, and if, oh, hang on, sorry, I'm having a, having a shank with this mouse. Um, and if this wasn't a grey cell, you could have drawn, whoops, you could have drawn this. So, so 
So what does that mean? So there are 16. Yeah, OK. So each of these, each of these sort of corner digits through which we could put a line segment of length three. It can't be part of, you know, if we draw that one in, it, that one doesn't exist. There's, there's only one, yeah, there's only one, only one line segment that corresponds to each of these four cells. So, so the maximum number of three cell line segments that a Sudoku can cope with on which all three digits on that line segment are repeated is 16, these 16 cells. Now actually here, we can immediately reduce that to 13 because that one, that one, and that one are not available because they are, and it's hard to see, but they are the shaded cells. They're slightly darker on my screen anyway. So 13 is the maximum now, and we need, we need nine. But that one, Yeah, and well now I think about it, that one, that one, whoopsie, 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 that one, to, to, for it to have three consecutive digits on it, it has to be that line segment, doesn't it? That might be wrong, but I'm just let me think about that, about that. That must be right. No, that must be right, actually. There's no, no way you can get from that cell to any of these other purple cells with enough alacrity and efficiency that you could repeat a digit on it three times. So this is a forced line segment. Right, so this is either, because this is, we don't know whether this is the top or the bottom of the snake, but that is a one or a nine. That's rather pretty, isn't it? Can I do the same with, yes, I can. I can do exactly the same with this one. So, oh no, I've done it again. Right, so this is, oh dear, dear, dear. This is a forced line segment. So that is that is also one or nine, but we don't know which. But we know, ah, right. So now I've got a one nine pair in row seven, and that isn't a one, which means that isn't a five. Uh, here's another point. Here's another point. If that was one, this is nine and vice versa. So there is a one looking at that square. So that's not a one, that's not a five. Right. But so, okay, so we go from here to here somehow with either this being three nines or three ones. So then there has to be another line segment that goes immediately from here through one. Oh, oh I see. No, this is, oh, this is horrible actually. It could go any way, it could go all over the place. Because what I'm seeing is, uh, let me just change color for a moment. It could do that because it can cross itself. But the other thing I saw it could do is it could do that. Oh, no, no, no. And then it could do that. Oh, dear, dear. This is complicated. This is immediately complicated because that one can go a lot of different ways. Ah, OK, right. OK, so I was I've been thinking about this in terms of purple squares, but actually maybe it's easier to think about it in terms of the three cell sequence for a line at the start of a three cell line segment that contains the same digit has to start in the middle of a Sudoku box, a, a middle of a Sudoku side, doesn't it? It has to start in one of those three or one of these. Or that one. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so there's loads of places. Hang on, how are we going to do this? Um, this, no. I'm almost tempted to try and draw them all in, actually. Is that a foolish thing to do? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So I'm going to try it just to see what it looks like. So that's a three cell line segment. That's a three cell line segment. But, ah, maybe we'll do it. 
maybe we'll do it so that's the, that's a three cell line segment that's a, maybe I, I keep all the ones that go that way we could keep the same color so those three yeah actually that's interesting that would have been one but no longer is <laughs> this is really weird because this could have that those three digits could all have been the same but now they can't be because those three were the same. So obviously I can't repeat whatever this digit is there because it's already appeared on this line segment. So this line, this line segment doesn't work. So in effect, that square is a gray square, I think. Have I got that right? Because that's really, that feels really powerful. Well, not powerful, but it feels definitely interesting at least. Right. Maybe, maybe what we do is we ungrey the or unpurple those, and can we definitely say this isn't one now? I think we can. I mean, I've got to draw a three cell line segment through this. I mean, that is the line segment, isn't it? There's no, there's no second line segment, so that's out. That one is not out. Okay, so that one. Uh, let's go back to line drawing tools and draw. Okay, so maybe we draw. We draw it in blue when it's going in sort of along the negative diagonal. Uh, yeah, but how do you? I'm really, I'm getting, I'm confusing myself here actually. Because I'm starting to think there's no way this can possibly... I'm, I'm starting to think I haven't got enough line segments that can do this. Okay, hang on. There's another northwesterly or sort of, sorry, north easterly one there. And then there's another one there. And another one there. Oh no, okay. It's uh, it's a bit confusing what I'm doing here actually. It is a bit confusing because I was thinking that this this blue one couldn't be a line segment because it couldn't join to anything, but it can. It could join to that, couldn't it? Um Right, so so okay, let's do a basic audit then. How many have I have I put a line? No, I haven't. Just seen one I haven't put in. I haven't put a line through that one. So that this is nonsense at the moment. That is another line segment. Has every purple got a line through it? Now I'm going to say yes. So this this is the panoply. This is the complete spectrum of three cell line segments that you can draw in a Sudoku. Now because we because of what we did with this one, where I realised that because this cell was on a line segment this line segment wasn't possible. I can extend that, can't I, to this one. So this V here, I don't know if, it, if that's clear, that V, let me just make it yellow for a moment. That can only, only one of those line segments can count. Because if this was, say, three sevens, that can't be three sixes, because that is a seven already. So that V could be one line segment. So we've got one, two three oh this is going to be it's really hard to count this actually maybe maybe i do it i'm going to do it really slowly one two three four i'm trying to do the ones that i can see are easy one that's four that's only four so far I need to get nine. I think this one is easy. That's five. Now all the others are a bit polluted because they involve crossing line segments. So if we just highlight those squares for a moment, that is five line segments that are fairly... fairly clear. Now... This V here, only one of those can be a line segment. So that's an so that bottom V 
is another one, which gets us to six. This top B is another one, which gets us to seven. And that leaves this central bucket, this sort of bucket that's on its side, which is these cells. Now that can't be three line segments because again we, we've effectively got two V's overlapping. It could be two though, if, if it, but only if it was that one and that one. So that's nine and that I don't see how we could ever be that. I'm just going to check this because this is so beautiful if this is right. So let me think. Yellow, one, two. So one here, two here, three here. Four here, five here. That that doesn't affect any other line segment's ability to exist. So that is only five. So I still need four more. The two V's, the, the vertical V, or sort of the mountain V, and the valley V can only be one. That's seven. And the bucket can only be two more. This is it. Right. And this is huge. This is huge because the bucket needs to account for two line segments. So this central blue thing can't be a line segment because if it was, if that was a line segment, you, you couldn't put a line segment there or there and your maximum count of three cell line segments is eight. So we can take this out or the, the, uh, the corollary of that is that that is not, that is not one of these three cell thingy thingies. So now, what else can we say is definitely true about this then? So now, so, okay, right. So I'm going to change, I'm going to change colors slightly because the only, the only question marks now are over the valley and the mountain V. Everything else has to be a line segment in this puzzle. So we probably want to illustrate that somehow. Maybe I'll change, I'm going to change the, the mountain or the valley first to being green and I'll change the, the mountain to being green and then everything else we could now make one color. So let's make them all red because that, that feels like it's, it's going to be easier to change quickly oopsie if I had any mouse skills so that becomes red so every red every red segment is a real part of the snake so have we actually improved our lot in life this no that this is even this is really difficult this is really difficult although is it? So that, this, this line segment here, oh, let's get rid of the yellow now. We don't need the yellow anymore. So this line segment is where I'm looking. Now this is not the end of the snake. So we have to, having got to this position, we've got to join up to another part of the snake. So surely it's that. There's only one way, isn't there? That, so that is, We've managed to sort of isolate one part of the snake there. And ah, now this is horrible because this line segment could join to that or it could join to this. If we just have to find something that is with, within one cell of it. Right, so we've ended up here after, if this is the starter snake or the end of the snake, it doesn't matter, but we end up there. But then oh, we've got loads of places we could go there, there, or there. And that possibly other places as well. So we can't. Uh, but hang on, hang on, hang on. No, what I was about to say is absolute nonsense as well. Ha, okay, here is a small point. This is the start or end of the snake. And we know the line segment ends there. So we can't join this circled cell to that. Is it that, because the, that's not how snakes work. <laughs> they don't branch. So this circled cell has to join to, ah, this is great. This is important. This cell here, therefore, which is part of the snake, but not an end of the snake, 
and can't join to the head of the snake or tail of the snake there because that line segment ends here has to go down to this which means this part of the snake is real which means this part is not real now ah brilliant right so now look at this position what does that now join to i think it has to join there this is this is weird so now now what what does that join to that's got to join to that hasn't it that's forced can't join to anything else i don't think so we've got two sort of oh i was about to say this is impossible but it's not impossible if it joined like that across the top um i can't see how to quite do this now uh how are the numbers going to get resolved? It's going to have to be the six cages, is it? That's amazing. That's amazing that Dorlier has somehow pinpointed some position of the six cages. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I guess I can see if all of these were ones, that becomes two, four, that becomes two, four, and some of these have to be twos and fours. Um, but all right, what have I what have I got to do now? Where does that join to? Ah, that's it. Right, that's it. Where does that join to? Now it's only got two options. It could join there, but that's going to create a, a a loop in the snake. That's not right, is it? It can only the only other place it could join to is there. So that that is a part of the snake now. Now what does that join to? Well, that joins to here, but but that doesn't tell us which way it then goes. Ah, but it does, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, because if if the, if if we continued, I'm going to do this in blue. If the snake continued along the blue line segment, this would then have to join to that. And if I'm not mistaken now, I've left out. These, line, these two red line segments, this upper bucket is just not on the snake at all. So that's wrong. So in fact, this, the, the left hand line segment going that way must be real. And then that must join to that and that must join to that. Now, is that a continuous snake? I mean, th did anyone think it was going to look like this? Um, I think that looks okay. I, don't, I mean, let's put some numbers in because we can do that now. So if this was, we know the second line segment from both sides is the twos and the eights, don't we? So those are two or eight, but the same thing must apply to this line segment. That's got to be two or eight. And then we've got to go three or seven for the next three cells in both directions. This is just sensational. I can, we're going to get the five. The five's going to be the key. The five is going to be the key. Mark my words. So now these three are fours and sixes. Um, the these three are fours and sixes, and that means look that that segment there. They meet in the middle. That is a line of fives, and that means that this is not a one five. Um, oh, oh, this is delightful. This is delightful because not only this, this is not one five. That's certainly true. It is two four, but that's telling us that this, this, this line segment here can't be fours, can it? Because if that's a four, you can't fill the six gauge. So that's, that is a six K that, that is a six line segment, which means the other one is a four line segment. And now five, six, we've got to go up. So that they're, they're sevens. These are eights and these are nines. So the snake did start here. So this is ones. This is twos. Dorlia, thank you so much for making a puzzle this beautiful for me to do when I was, I was on holiday. This is this is gorgeous. Now, uh, ooh, hang on. now what does this mean, though? Um, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm sort of quite proud of that. We've built a 27 length slow thermometer 
snake in the grid. This has to be, oh, this has to be 2, 4, it sees 1. And the 2 of it is going to have to be there, isn't it? So that's 2, 4, which means this isn't 2. So that is 4. Um, okay. I mean, we've got quite a lot of real estate in, where, oh, where's 5 in the middle box? It goes there by Sudoku. So that's three, this is one. Row six, maybe. Um, in the absence of anything more obvious, four, oh, that's a naked single. That's got to be a six, because it can't be four or five. So this is a four, five pair, which means I've got a four, five pair in column eight. Um, where is two in box four? It's got to be in the gray square, look. So these squares are three, eight, nine. I know where the nine goes. So nine, this is three and eight. So let's have a look along with this row now where we haven't put ones and sixes in. Bobbins, that doesn't work. <laughs> we could put sevens and eights into these squares. That also appears to be unresolved. Bobbins, um, nine, and I haven't forgotten how to say bobbins. Uh, two, where's two in column four? It's got to go there because there's a two here looking at it. So that's got to be a nine. That's got to be a nine. These squares are now known, three, five, and six. Uh, so that's a naked single, no three in the corner. Uh, this is a six, this is a five. Um, Okie dokie, one and nine in column five are a pair at the top, which means these have got to be a seven, eight pair, which means I guess we must have four, five, and six down here. Now, can we do that? That's not four. That's a naked four, in fact, um, which doesn't affect this six cage over here. But these squares are now three and seven, which we can resolve. Three goes here, seven goes here. So in, in this row, we haven't put one, two, and eight in. It's still not resolved. <laughs> um, one, two, eight. This square is not two. Um, what about this row then? Five, sixes, and threes. So the three has to go there, in fact. Three, this is five or six. Does that do anything? Probably does in some way, I can't, I can't tell. Ah, ah, where is three in box one? And the answer is there. That's three in the corner, that's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Thank you very much for including that, Dorlia. Um, I'm guessing you didn't have too much flexibility when you designed the puzzle to include such beautiful accoutrement, but I'm grateful for you doing that. So that's nine, this is eight, that's nine, that's one. Uh, the eight and seven are now resolved by this. Oh, that seven's done some more things. This two and four is resolved. So what are these squares? Two and something, two and nine. Yes, we can do it. Nine and two. And that two, at last, does this six gauge. So one and five go in. Six, six, five go in down here. That's now five, four, one. So it has the feel that might be finishing, actually. Now that's seven in this column. That's eight. The fan turns on again. This is eight. This is two. I've not put four and seven into this box. Uh, but I can do that if I do that first. So in this column, look, we've not put ones and fives. Let's do that. And this looks like a four, six pair. Is that right? I hope so. I really hope so, yes. <laughs> I loved that. That was absolutely brilliant. It is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful that you can work out exactly which nine three cell sequences you you have to use just from the sort of basic setup of the puzzle the selection of the gray cells knocking certain options out the getting you know to those mountains and valleys of these and the, and the bucket and seeing that you you know you had to get a specific number of three cell line segments in order to ever achieve the, the, the necessary length of saying and then to do that in a way where just three six cages lead to a unique solution and a disambiguation of the ordering of the snake that is 
fantastic setting, Dorlea. Thank you very much for making. I, I have had a very nice time on holiday and you have just improved it further. And for that, I commend you and thank you. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.